Hakuna Matata, what a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata, it ain't no passing craze. It means that this is movie night. Hello and welcome to Movie Night, YouTube's number one movie review show. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. Tonight's theme is Disney Animation, and to date there have been 52 feature-length films from Walt Disney Animation Studios. But we'll begin tonight with Beauty and the Beast. Loosely adapted on the 16th century French fairy tale, this family musical fantasy was released to critical and commercial success in November of 1991, eventually grossing $400 million in profit. Holding the impressive distinction of being the first animated feature to be nominated for Best Picture, this 84-minute G-rated adventure was arguably the high watermark for the so-called Disney Renaissance, receiving six Oscar nods in total. Paige O'Hara lends her voice talents to the lead heroine, Belle, a bookworm in a small French village who becomes forcibly involved with a cursed beast living in a rundown castle, played by Robbie Benson. Littered with a half-dozen memorable, catchy, and expertly animated musical numbers, this picture is briskly paced as it bounces from scene to scene, introducing an array of goofy and enjoyable characters. From Jerry Orbach as Lumineer, the charming Frenchman transformed into a candelabra, to Richard White as Gaston, your stereotypical Disney villain, an egotistical hunter determined to marry Belle as a point of personal conquest. Containing fewer celebrity voices than the usual Disney film, the talent here is still impeccable and engaging, bringing to life their lines with excitement and honesty, even if several of them unfortunately use singing doubles. Although the genesis for the entire story hinges on what amounts to a petty and incredibly unjust punishment, the true love curse plot is effective, even though it is as old as time. She's not coming. What? Okay. You're crazy! You're eminent! That's what we I thought I told you to come down to dinner! I'm not hungry! You'll come out or I'll... I'll, I'll break down the door! The master... I could be wrong, but uh, that may not be the best way to win the girl's affections. Please, attempt to be a gentleman. But she is being so difficult. Gently, gently. A wonderfully simple and enchanting story for children that I myself loved as a kid, the screenplay is unfortunately the weak point, as it provides for only a cursory glimpse at the romance between Belle and the Beast. Understandably, it's short, so kids won't get bored, but I can't help but feel like another 10 minutes during the second act could have really helped this movie. Curiously, the special edition added brand new content to this section, but instead of character development, it focuses on a whimsical new song. A climactic ballroom dancing sequence set to the Academy Award winning title track is produced with, at the time, revolutionary computer technology, resulting in a breath takingly beautiful and moving sequence that is the true centerpiece of the entire film. From the upbeat dances to the intense fight sequences, the overall atmosphere is perhaps a bit jumbled, but director Gary Truesdale does a fine job of transitioning them well enough. This is a feel-good, well-animated story that the entire family can enjoy, even if it never quite astonishes. Beauty and the Beast, a beautiful, heartwarming story that delights. Now let's see what you had to say about this movie in the YouTube comments. The Rate-O-Matic with a 9 and a 9 for Beauty and the Beast. You applauded the animation and the music, but held off from the top score for the exact same reasons I did. Gaston is a one-note villain, and the story is perhaps a bit too simple. You thought it was awesome. A true Walt Disney classic I enjoy today as much as I did 20 years ago, I thought it was awesome as well. Next up, The Lion King. Released in June of 1994, this musical dramedy remains the highest grossing traditionally animated film of all time, with close to 1 billion in proceeds. The all-star cast of familiar voice talent includes Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Matthew Broderick, James Earl Jones, Jeremy Irons, Nathan Lane, Whoopi Goldberg, Cheech Marin, and Rowan Mr. Bean Atkinson. But let's not forget Frank Welker, Hollywood's go-to guy for animal sound effects. This underappreciated voice actor has literally 700 film credits on his IMDb page. The G-rated story follows the life of Simba, the anthropomorphic lion cub who was forced to abandon his home and family after a tragic event eventually forced to face his responsibilities, remembering his father's sage advice, I'm only brave when I have to be. During the up-tempo second act, when Simba ages from kid to adult during a super fun montage, he becomes friends with carefree Sahara drifters Timon and Pumbaa, a lovable and hilarious duo who went on to star in their very own video game and cartoon show, one that I just happened to watch every morning before school as a kid. The villains are creepy and dastardly, and do a great job of setting the consequences for the final battle scene. 
Although the exposition is ridiculously overt, with many of the characters rather bluntly declaring their motivation and intentions, the characters and writing here are largely fun, enjoyable, and layered. With three of its incredible songs nominated for Academy Awards, the musical numbers that drive the plot are all exciting, festive, and difficult not to sing along to. Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata. Ain't no peasant craze. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem free. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata? Yeah, it's our motto. What's the motto? Nothing. What's the motto with you? <laughs> <laughs> While Hakuna Matata is a personal favorite, Elton John's Oscar-winning Can You Feel the Love Tonight is emotionally moving and beautifully animated, ramping this picture into a tense and exciting final act that is unfortunately a bit rushed. Honestly, the curious pacing in this otherwise splendid 89-minute picture is the only flaw, particularly a prolonged and drawn-out setup that takes nearly 40 minutes before arriving at the first major plot turn. Respectfully treating the animals like true characters rather than a means to a joke. You won't find any goofy props or Flintstone-style gags where the African landscape is treated as a weird analogy for American society. Instead, we're left with an inspiring, moving, charming, hilarious, and wonderfully animated classic that is immensely enjoyable no matter how many times you watch it. Dealing with complicated themes of betrayal and redemption with ease, The Lion King has exciting action, music, and characters. Now let's see what you had to say about this feature in the YouTube comments. Our score is for Lion King, a double nine. Unanimous praise was given to the songs and music, but overall scores were mixed, resulting in an awesome. If I had to choose, this is probably my favorite Disney animated picture. Its strong characters and vibrant animation make it a timeless classic. But as I'm no longer an eight year old, I'll have to score just an awesome this time. Now, a quick word from our sponsor. MoviePass is a relatively new service that for $30 a month gets you one of these magic cards, allowing you to see unlimited movies in theaters nationwide. For access to exclusive invites, all you need to do is sign up at moviepass.com slash jogwheel. Not only will you save $10 off your first month, you'll also help support Movie Night 2. Our final Disney animated film tonight is Wreck-It Ralph. Preceded in theaters by the incredible Academy Award winning 7 minute short Paper Man, this computer animated family comedy grossed over $400 million after it was released worldwide in November of 2012. Opting to forego the musical fanfare, this PG adventure revolves around a tumultuous crisis moment for John C. Riley, who plays the title character, a villain in an arcade game, a sort of hybrid of Crazy Climber, Rampage, and Donkey Kong, who decides he doesn't want to be the bad guy anymore, longing for a more fulfilling existence. Combining the Toys Are Alive element of Toy Story and Night at the Museum, this 108 minute movie is a fantastic tribute to many of gaming's greatest arcade heroes and villains. Opening with an engaging opening narration from Riley, we're introduced to a fun and inventive world that expertly blends multiple styles of animation, color palettes, and even frame rates for each of the individual games that are featured. The transformative visuals are downright stunning at times. Unfortunately, too much time is spent inside the cutesy food-themed Sugar Rush game, leaving loads of untapped opportunities, falling back on far too many food-related jokes instead. Segments involving Ralph's game, Fix-It Felix Jr., a large power strip modeled after Grand Central Station, and a racing sequence similar to Mario Kart are truly inspired and enjoyable. The zany characters we meet along the way are each as adorable and entertaining as the last, from Jack McBrayer as the eagerly polite Felix who ironically bemoans, I fix everything I touch, to painfully typecast Jane Lynch as the gruff talking army sergeant from a first person shooter game called Hero's Duty. The standout performance is Sarah Silverman as an outcast racer whose unlikely and unwilling relationship with Ralph is truly enjoyable to watch unfold through a series of quickly edited and brilliantly animated montages. You're not from here, are you? No, well, yeah, I mean, I mean not from right in this area. I'm just doing some work here. What kind of work? There's some routine candy tree trimming. Uh, you probably want to stand back. In fact, this whole area is technically closed while we're trimming. Who's we? Candy tree department. Oh. Uh, hey. Are you a hobo? No, I'm not a hobo, but I am busy. Okay, so you go go home. Hey, why are your hands so freakishly big? Uh, I don't know. Why are you so freakishly annoying? Although perky and hostile, Silverman is never annoying. 
instead contributing one of the funniest moments in the movie when she riffs on the aforementioned hero's duty, forcing Ralph to listen to a string of crude poop jokes in succession. The voice acting from the entire recognizable cast, that also includes Ed O'Neill, Dennis Haysbert, and Alan Tudyk, are peppy and believable. Perfectly capturing the essence and nostalgia of arcade gaming, this decently paced film balances just the right amount of charm, wit, and sophistication without taking itself too seriously, resulting in a truly rewarding experience for all gamers. We can only hope this marks the start of another Disney renaissance. Wreck-It Ralph, lovable characters in fantastic environments. Now let's read some of your reviews for this movie from the YouTube comments. Wreck-It Ralph gets a 9 and a 9 from us. Well, after last week's Oscar special where we disagreed on everything, it seems this week we're completely in tune. You loved the animation and dozens of video game references. You thought this film was awesome. This is a modern day adventure for the 21st century presented with Disney's familiar trademark style. I thought it was awesome as well. Finally tonight, a look at what's currently playing in theaters with some of your tweet critiques. If you see a new movie in theaters, tweet your review with the JPMN hashtag to have it featured on the show. Next week, we won't be in Kansas anymore, as we'll be reviewing the iconic The Wizard of Oz from 1939, and the brand new The Great and Powerful Oz, which opens nationwide on March 8th. Let me know what you think about these movies by voting in the polls below or by leaving a comment review. And please subscribe to the Movie Night Archive channel for my exclusive trailer commentaries and an organized library of all our past reviews. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you for watching Movie Night. I hope to see you right back here next Friday.